Hi, this is Deadman. If you're watching this video, I assume you're old enough to see gore, violence, swearing, and general adult content. If you aren't old enough, come back with some ID. Or a fake one. Platinum Games is always a win. Metal Gear Rising. Revengeance. Entering the Konami code has Raiden saying the game's name. Your team deserves credit as well, Mr. Lightning Bolt. Callback? I feel like that's callback. I am Lightning. The rain transformed. I must admit, I once thought of groups like yours as opportunists, enablers of war. You wouldn't be wholly incorrect. When the Patriot system was active, that was absolutely what they were used for. But leave it to Ryden and find a private military company. We prefer private security provider. Uh, sorry, private security provider that is more so peacekeepers than warmongers. There's a saying I like. One sword keeps another in the sheath. Sometimes the threat of violence alone is a deterrent. Sometimes by taking a life, others can be preserved sad as it is that's the truth just be careful you don't become a big boss in the process i said clear the road we're authorized to use force if you do Sam is an absolute badass. Also, to mention going forward, Sam is the only one of the main fighting cast that's not a cyborg, but in an Exo 2 to enhance his strength and speed. This only enhances his badassery. Sam's shit-eating grin gives him more character in five seconds it's on display than a lot of other characters do for an entire game. Who was that? A cyborg. Good guess, but actually no. The tearaway suit suggests having a meeting at 11 and a boss fight at 12. to start off with, the combat is fantastic. It's your normal platinum light and heavy attacks and the entire game is a playable version of the cutscenes of Metal Gear Solid 4 when Raiden goes all out, and even includes some of the moves like when Raiden holds the blade with his foot and does slashes. Being able to ninja run and deflect bullets. Sundowner is a badass bad guy. Business ain't been the same since they shut down SOP. The 
clean break from the war economy. Huh. Well, some of us lack that economy. How's an honest warmonger supposed to make a living? A nice tie in the Metal Gear Solid 4. Okay, I did warn you about this. The freaking boss fights are all so spectacular they break the wind counter. Each one of them are uniquely designed and have amazing music to accompany their fights. A huge shout out to Jamie Christopherson. Especially when you get to use blade mode and cut down the bosses piece by piece. It's phenomenal. Stop that blade! This is exactly why I love Platinum games. Does it make sense? No. Does it break the laws of physics? Absolutely. Does any of that matter? No, because the rule of cool applies. I refer you to my previous point. Hey. The upside of being a cyborg is you are your own braking system. Oh, you're saying. Give war a chance! I see what you did there. It wouldn't be a Metal Gear game without someone losing an eye or wearing an eye patch. Have I mentioned how badass Sam is? It's gonna come up a few times, so strap in. This is why I pointed out that he's only augmented by an exosuit instead of being a full cyborg. He's still the strongest and best fighter among everyone, and with the exception of one of his arms being cybernetic, is still all human. Shit, not again. At least you still have your other arm this time. I don't think you can fight Sam with your sword in your mouth. Which brings up another point. Showing how weak Raiden is in this body, which was used in Metal Gear Solid 4, and if you remember how badass he was there, just goes to show you how the world has changed and how strong these other cyborg-bodied individuals are. Having the static -y vignette across the screen shows just how rough of shape you're in. Oh, did you want to practice first? Get to waiting, huh? Callbacks. Absorbing their electrolytes. I got it. Wait, is Raiden stealing their Gatorade? He may not even be in country. But keep an eye out, Justin. No. Uh, sorry. Ready for insertion. Um, phrasing?
I absolutely love the destructive environments in this game and would absolutely love to see more of it. On top of the destructive environments is your blade mode, which easily is one of the best systems in any game. Time slows down while in blade mode to get precise cuts and can even cut grenades in half. Then there's the Zandatsu system. If you're being overwhelmed in a fight and there's still enemies alive, you can cut them open, take their core, and absorb their energy, giving you both full health and blade mode energy. That's handy. Well, you know how fast the tech's been spreading these last few years. Which actually explains why everyone is a cyborg. Right. Vending machines full of blood. <sighs> I think maybe Vamp learned to body swap? Either way, Phil Lamar is a win. Well, at least some of the stealth was kept. Okay then, what's the meaning of life? Why are we here? I am here to kill you. Smartass answer for a smartass question. Exterminate! 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 Guess what time it is? That's right, insane amounts of wind time. The only knock I have on this battle is Blade Wolf calling for help. Other than that, fantastic fight, just like all the other boss fights. Blade Wolf gives you a great introduction to faster paced fights. Unlike Ray, who is just a giant tank, Blade Wolf requires reading his moves and attacking at the right time. So the lyrics may be a bit hard to hear, but each vocal track has something to do with each boss fight. Blade Wolf was stated before in a conversation with Raiden. He is very intelligent, but is shackled by his own programming. He wants to be his own master and be free. Damn, brutal! It appears that man underwent modification at the Patriot facility, just as you did. Doc, why do you have to remind me of the story I'd rather see? My leg. It's kinda hilariously brutal you can even do this. If you would kill for your ideals, then surely you are ready to die for them. While Blade Wolf was a nice introduction to fast-paced combat, Mistral dials it up even more. She uses the dwarf geckos as bombs by throwing them at you, detaching their arms for more of her arms and the long pole arms she uses when you cut them down. Plus, she has the range too, keeping you on your toes the whole time. <laughs> This is how they felt. Dying. 
Parkos. At least by beating her, he gave her the challenge she yearned for. So you've got some kind of disguise lined up, right? Yep, all set. Hope so. You'd be a little conspicuous just walking the streets. Relax, Kev. I'll blend right in. So yeah, I say let's throw him a bow. Wordplay. My exoskeleton resembles a canine. Canines enjoy bones. Amusing on two levels. I love that Blade Wolf is now your partner. Also, nice pun. Mariachi riding is definitely a win. A Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle reference is always appreciated. Me name George, like Georgetown. George. And just like all damn America president. There's a lot of Jack the Ripper hints dropped before he actually makes an appearance, and I like that kind of foreshadowing. Between Mistral saying they're alike and George being named, well, George. They pack us all a pickable dodgy container. Next thing we know, we're here at the Jumbie Lab. All kids, like you. It's also great we get more on Raiden's backstory as a child soldier and his want to protect the children from suffering the same fate as him. Perhaps. But first you need to take a dump. I... wait, what? A dump? A digital optical output mounted proxy. You'll need one to interface with the terminal. I didn't need to sleep tonight. <laughs> Controlling the dwarf gecko is honestly great. It's definitely a stealth section, but the guards mostly ignore you anyway. Not that they're terrifying, but seeing that they're a little dopey just like their bigger variants is a bit soothing. That terminal is most likely designed to download mission data and such into the UGs. Let's try using it to access the lab server. It's okay, buddy. It happens to everyone. We've already commenced the uh, plan. The Sears program? Yep. Second one old Georgie boy used on the kids in Liberia. Of course, it's wide straight to the brain now. Feels as real as anything else. I don't know what's worse, the fact that they named it the Sears program, or the fact that they're harvesting children's brains and making them go through VR training to make them better combatants. But just gathering the donors required a significant investment. Yes, 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 you'll get the money. Accounting will be in touch. Really spectacular, spared no expense. George, are you sure? Hmm? Hmm. I'm ready. Me life now so precious. Ching, what if we can take this scunt to hell with me? Cayete! <laughs> That's all I needed to hear. Stop it! Now! I'll kill him, I swear! That got surprisingly dark. Yo, me ninja brother! George, good to see you up and about. How you feeling? Never better, nah? No brain, no more for star while them hunger spacey, and me never ever feel so awake, nah? That's because your blood sugar levels are being maintained automatically. Beats the hell out of coffee. George is okay. While it may have made more story sense for Raiden to have to choose and tie in better with him keeping the Ripper in check, it's still cool they were able to save him and even make him a cyborg like he wanted. Boy, that escalated quickly. 
I mean, that really got out of hand fast. I won't sit by while they butcher little kids and ship their parts around like meat. It's sick. It's not all so simple, right? They import those brains legally for medical purposes. It's all done. Being legal doesn't make it right. Raiden brings up an excellent point. Him being a tool for justice is a great way to express his character on top of wanting to protect children at all costs. Another fun aspect to the combat is when you defeat the three major bosses, you get their weapons to use as a replacement for your heavy attack. Look, I'm fed up with all of it. Companies like ours, yours, bend the laws when it suits business. Why not bend it when it can save innocent lives? Raiden. Boris, listen to me. That VR training. They'll be warped into killing machines. They'll be set on POWs, civilians. It'll be one atrocity after another. Hmm. Like what you went through. We can't have any more Jack the Rippers. Raiden makes some excellent points. Points that everyone should consider. Well then. <clears throat> Officially, Maverick Incorporated condemns you and your actions as unlawful. And a pain in the asshole. The segment in the Denver Tunnels is interesting and one of the only true stealth segments in the game. It's pitch black, so you can't see unless you have your visor up, but if you run into trouble, you can't attack with it on. It's a nice balance for this particular segment that's doable in this action game. Do not be distracted by the advertisements. You are not here as a tourist. Sure. I'll just buy a quick souvenir or two for Rose and that'll be it. Raiden, we must hurry. Remind me to teach you about sarcasm sometime. I understand your attempts at humor. I simply do not find them entertaining. Isn't this all a bit much? Any decent lunatic would have quit after Mexico. This part of Sam breaking your will down over all the monitors is fantastic. He gives that powerful impression off by being everywhere and mocking Raiden for being a tool of justice. But now here you are, the child solo, fighting for the children. <laughs> Please, what do you really expect to accomplish here? Place in here to a bunch of brains. And what? Earn a medal? Philip Anthony Rodriguez is so good as Jetstream Sam. He is easily the most charismatic out of the bunch, and he really sells the role hard. My sword is a means to an end. To protect those you'd prey on. Really? Let me ask you, all those cyborgs you've killed up to now, maybe they weren't kids, but they were people. You ever think about them? When you're chopping them into hamburger? They're adults. They made their choice. Sure they're adults. Sure they signed up for this. Right on the dotted line of their PMC contract. Usually they're no strangers to war. In fact, many times they already lost a limb or two. Many times they were out of work and starving on the street. So yes, they sign up for surgery to fight God knows where. How else would you provide for your family when your country's embroiled in civil war? Pain receptors shut down, pumped full of fear inhibiting nanomachines and sent right into the blender? Your blender? But they made their choice, right? Open your eye and see, Raiden. I've seen plenty. Then listen. Those battlefield emotions that the Nano suppress. Listen to them. What are you talking about? Shh. There he is! Kill him! <laughs> Can we take him? What's wrong? The way he killed all the others? Oh God. Die. Let's do this! I am the family! This isn't fair! Little punk! Listen closely now. Die! This life! I watch my wife and son die. This is all I have left. You ain't shit! Goddamn, I even took my leg. <laughs> I need a job. Stop! Is something the matter, Raiden? <laughs> oh. I've nearly saved enough to bring Mama to the stage. 
finish him off! Whatever it takes to be free of this torture. Stop it! That's powerful. Sam shows us, not just Raiden, but us, that all the enemies you fight in this game are people with lives too. It also impacts Raiden to an immense degree that practically breaks the spirit. So now's as good of a time as any to bring it up since we have seen the four main Desperados. I feel like it's maybe just me, but it feels like these guys resemble Dead Cells an awful lot. Fortune and Mistral are both dark-skinned women. Colonel Johnson has never seen a Metal Gear Solid 2 and we don't ever actually see Monsoon's face. Batman and Sundowner are both huge bald dudes, and while they don't share a lot in the physical features department, Vamp and Sam do look a little similar while also being his most direct rival. That's a badass entrance on top of showing what he will be able to do in their battle later on. Oh, shit. Is that a meme? Probably. I learned young that killing your enemies felt good. Really good. In America, my friends, my family, they helped me forget the devil inside. But who am I kidding? I was born to kill! <laughs> The bit about my sword, that means of justice stuff, I guess I needed something to keep the Ripper in check when I was knee-deep in bodies. Y you But you, all this is a wake-up call to what I really believe, what I really am. What are you saying? I'm saying Jack is back. Doctor, turn off my pain inhibitors. What? This, this is madness. You do it. Okay. All right. Pain. This is why I fight. <laughs> Lost your mind. Monsoon's fight puts your reflexes to the test as he will pop out from smoke and attack you, and also use his body to split apart. He also throws tanks and helicopters at you, so that's fun. And also, Ripper mode is constantly active. Now! Yeah, Ripper! You're dead! Get off! Oh, 
rest. The brains are in the server room undergoing training. Knock yourself out. Go nuts. Um, thank you? Most of the time, you're working with first world ex-military. Grown men. Compared to the average third world child soldier, I can't really complain. Most of them, they're the sort of gorillas your typical patient gets paid to slaughter. I haven't mentioned it yet, but Quentin Flynn does an amazing job at portraying Raiden throughout Rising. He even makes his voice more growling and raspy to distinguish between Raiden and the Ripper. Great work, Doc. Elementary, my dear Raiden. Sherlock Holmes reference. They're kids, you son of a bitch. And kids are cruel. I mean, he's not wrong. Like I said, kids are cruel, Jack. And I'm very in touch with my inner child. <laughs> Sundowner's fight is fantastic. His major obstacle is how precise you can be with your blade mode. If you cut incorrectly, you get an explosion to the face. Plus, it's fun fighting what's essentially a giant tank. A nice flight. And people say Germans aren't funny. Hilarious jokes and politeness. There it is. <laughs> Hacking by sword is my new favorite way to hack. Too bad it can't be implemented in watchdogs. Raiden's visor seems to be a great protector against the wind. Forget it. We've both heard enough speeches about higher causes by now. That's a nice subversion with Sam not giving a monologue about his ideals. He's just ready to fight. Don't interfere. This is between us. Western Style Showdown. And it ends here. Okay. Let's dance! The fight with Jetstream Sam is phenomenal. No bullshit, no stupid gimmicks, just a straightforward samurai style showdown. I didn't even knock Sam's sword out of his hands, and Sam just punches and kicks you until he gets it back. Just getting started! Playtime, 
It's a bit anticlimactic when you think about the other bosses, but it's very fitting for the samurai duel that this was. Ah, I'm bleeding! Ah, I'm bleeding! He barely had any cyborg enhancements. Thus, the reason for him being so badass. Somehow, footage of my downtime made it into the game. Hi there, stranger. Sunny! Shake? <laughs> Good boy! Blade <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> Wolf pissed Dryden off so much as Ripper Energy came out. You gotta do a superhero landing. Wait for it. Woo! And yet American blood was spilled by Americans in America. Getting to fight Metal Gear Excellus is awesome, but the best part is to come. Opposing Sumo Stance? Yeah, this got hella ridiculous, but amazing. Let's go! The hell are you thinking? I seriously underestimated Armstrong. I thought he'd be a pushover. Nope, he's able to toss riding around like a ragdoll. I can break the present in two with my bare hands! <laughs> What? Nice, nice. You got knocked the fuck out. If America's gone to shit, you're just another maggot crawling in the pile. I have a dream. What? That one day, every person in this nation will control their own destiny. A land of the truly free, dammit. A nation of action, not words, ruled by strength, not committee. Where the law changes to suit the individual, not the other way around. Where power and justice are back where they belong. In the hands of the people! Where every man is free to think, to act for himself! 
Armstrong is one of those Metal Gear villains that low-key makes a lot of sense. Maybe I was wrong about you. Am I finally getting through? I'll rid this world of pointless wars, Jack. I was wrong. You're not greedy. You're batshit insane! I legitimately feel just a little bit sorry for Armstrong here. what I said about Sundowner. Armstrong is the real tank. Why won't you die? <laughs> Nano machine, son. And like that, Armstrong explained the entirety of Metal Gear and also made the top tier meme. Wolf to the rescue! I feel like this is a Queen reference. Damn much! <clears throat> Rude. I'm strong! Duh. I said my sword was a tool of justice. Not used in anger. Not used for vengeance. But now, now I'm not so sure. And besides, this isn't my sword. Come on! Okay. Dance. The fight with Armstrong is intense. This is the culmination of all your skills. You'll need your ninja run, precise blade mode, and hella good reflexes to make it out of one piece. Armstrong will also knock your sword out of your hand and throw pieces of Metal Gear Excellus at you. thought your exclamation mark was sneaky. Think again. You make me head spin, you know? Mm. Y'all same age as me? 
But all these spaceship, you're genius, girl. Mm -hmm. And you're hot for days. Flirting? Huh? Where did that come from? Oh. 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 No matter how confident she gets, I suppose she's still just a goofy, awkward kid. Alert. Alert. Resending. Each playable character gets their own customized credits. I hear World Marshal's looking for a buyer. <laughs> well, you cost them a lot of money, though. No? Not to mention killing their funding. Literally. <laughs> you will not come back. Sorry, Boris. I understand. But then, what will you do? Fight. So, I can't subtract from Infinity, but I'm making the noise because I need a Metal Gear Rising sequel, and that doesn't seem very likely. Sam has a completely different moveset from Raiden, and it comes with a double jump. He even has a different type of Zandatsu, and kinda looks like he's enjoying himself a little too much. Well, what do we have here? Oh. Whoops. <laughs> Sam is a nonchalant badass. Greetings, Samurai. Reiterate this. Sam is not enhanced. He is just a badass. And your orders are to kill me? Yes. <laughs> Call me biased. But those seem like pretty dumb orders, Pop. <laughs> Sam's like, what the fuck is this? uses his leap gamer skills and recognized Armstrong's pattern. Again, for a non-augmented person, this is incredible. Well, it was fun while it lasted. Like Monsoon said. Losing a limb or two won't stop us. Well, that's not fair at all. Continuing the trend, Blade Wolf also has his own move set. This chair is weirdly kinky in more ways than one. 
Well, that simply won't do, now will it? There! I have disengaged your range inhibitor. I am free to go wherever I choose. For now. But just remember, I can switch it back at any time. <laughs> with his giant friggin' tomahawk is amazing. It's a good cap off to the game as the last boss of the DLCs. You fight him in his giant neck and he swings it around trying to break you. That's not fair at all. Shake. Just needlessly cruel. Yes, he freed me. Like me, he had been forced to kill. He has witnessed the dark side of human nature. But still, he continues to fight for what he believes in. Yeah. And that's why I believe in him. He'll keep holding on to it and won't ever let it go. Even if there's no follow-up game, this is a very nice and happy ending for Raiden. I love how even though he's a mechanical being with high intellect, he still acts like a dog. Okay, so going off of the Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain review, I made it way too long. <laughs> I rambled on and I made it way too long, so I'm going to try to cut them shorter, hopefully keep them to about five minutes or so. I still lament that we never got to see what would have been of Metal Gear Solid Rising, but hot damn do I love the way Revenge turned out. Having it be more action-focused because Platinum was the developer is probably the best thing that could have been done for the game. I still wish we could have seen Raiden's transformation and journey to the ninja he is in 4. I would have loved to see the story played out, but still thoroughly enjoyed what we have, and doing it set after the guns of the Patriots probably helped the story stand on its own a little bit better and not get tied up in continuity and uh, retcon stuff. Um, I have a pretty short list for this game for pros and cons. Um, first one, huge pro, is the music. Um, some of the regular background tracks are good. They're not as orchestral in scale as Harry Gregson Williams does. But, you know, those are fine. That's not the main focus. The main focus is the boss tracks. I, to this day, still listen to the boss tracks. And it's been over seven years since this game was released. Those boss tracks are amazing, especially... I'm pretty sure my favorite of the bunch is always going to be Rules of Nature. It kind of fluctuates on which one I listen to mostly, but Rules of Nature is definitely the one I've listened to the most. I love 
rules of nature and how everything plays out with it. Uh, something else is the blade mode and, and being able to cut anything. Those kind of tie together. Those are so unique. I'm surprised they haven't been used in any other type of game. I actually kind of hope that even if it's not a Metal Gear game, Platinum still goes back and makes something with this kind of system in it. Maybe be able to expand it a little bit. Um, I know Platinum doesn't really do open world games, at least not from what I've seen. But being able to put in Blade Mode and more destructible environments, that would be so cool if we could see another game like that, especially just the Blade Mode, because being able to precisely cut where you want is not something that you see very often. Uh, the couple of cons I do have, as good as the game controls, it also controls very janky at the same time. Especially in the stealth sections, because you can be trying to sneak up on somebody and you'll move just, you don't really, I mean, you do have a slight walk, but that's too slow and they usually, you know, will pass you up. It, the, the stealth just feels kind of jank in here. Um, it's, it's still good in some sections, but it mostly feels like it's jank and it does feel like there's a huge margin for error. Like you just barely get into their cone. It's not like in, you know, other Metal Gear games, which this is a Metal Gear game, but it's also kind of not at the same time, but you still have that kind of room for error with your being seen by everybody else. Whereas in here, it's like, oh, you stuck one of your fancy hairs out in our line of sight. Well, that's immediate full alert. Whereas in, you know, like even two with just the other one that you played riding as, you, you had a little more margin for error. They could see you. If, if you weren't too close, you could go and hide. Some of the collision detection with cut objects is kind of bad because there's sometimes when you're running and you want to just run and dash through and feel like the ultimate badass ninja you are and then ride and get stuck on some part of the thing. Now, you know, obviously, if you're going off a of real world physics, he's not just going to be able to phase through them. But like if you're running, it'd be kind of cool if they could make it cut a little bit neater so you can just blaze through instead of jerking on the geometry of the game and the only the last one is is mostly just nitpicky there's no boss rush that is easily the best part of the games is just fighting the bosses there's no boss rush there i mean they have chapter select but one of my favorite ones to go fight actually is sundowner and sundowner you have to go through that entire level and fight monsoon and fight Nistral, which i guess is is kind of your boss rush there but something maybe a little more dedicated where you can just go into a section of sub menu and be like hey i want to refight these bosses maybe even do them in this order you know maybe i want to go from fighting Armstrong's last phase and then going fighting Sam and then go fighting Metal Gear Excellus and so on and so on. Um, I just think that could have been a really, really good addition to the game, especially when they have the DLC stuff. Um, even if it's going back and fighting Blade Wolf as Sam, it's still a different fight than the one that you had with Raiden. And the Armstrong with Sam, it's still different than the one you had as Raiden, mostly just because they have different movesets. Obviously the wind counter is hella broken, the, the winds, the, the actual numbers don't matter. Most games are inherently good, and I just really, really like this one, and I wish there could be more uh, games like this, actually. I like the character action games that are, you know, Devil May Cry, which I haven't gotten around to playing those, and Bayonetta. Um, there's another Platinum game that I'm missing. Uh, there's Vanquish. Vanquish is fun to play, even though it's not, you know, beat him up it's a shooty one but still um i like pl all the platinum games and this one was really really fun to play i've enjoyed this ever since it came out and i will continue to enjoy it until the heat death of the universe or i die whichever comes first and um just kind of hope they release another one even though i know they're not going to just in case anybody's wondering i will be covering metal gear survive at some point but i've kind of hit a fatigue wall with metal gear where especially because i actually had to go and replay the phantom pain like three times to get all the footage and i still didn't even get all the footage because stuff kept getting corrupted um so i will be doing survive at some point i know i was not like a good game quote unquote. It was fun from the little bit that I played of it, but I was mostly pissed that I couldn't do co-op with my buddy because they have a co-op thing set up, but it's not like the campaign so we could just go through together. Even though it seems like it would be pretty easy, it's not like it's going to be game breaking because, oh, there's only one big boss so we can't have anybody else come in. You know, kind of like what they did with 3, I think you uh, want to say that the buddy that came in was just like one of the faceless, nameless faceless 
faceless soldiers at Mother Base. Metal Gear Survive is, is okay, but I, I haven't played much of it, and I probably won't be covering it anytime soon, um, so I guess just be on the lookout for that. As for the time being, right now, I'm done with Metal Gear, um, like I said, until I get around to doing Survive. Um, so that's been it, and try not to die up there. Don't be playing! Very good, but do not rest easy just yet, huh?